Greetings. Welcome to Avon Valley Churches, Youth, Children and Families. My name is Jeremy and I'd like to tell you a story that I've known for most of my life. It's by the same author as The Small Miracle, the story which I told you in January. This one is called The Snow Goose. A great many years ago, I used to drive right through London and keep heading in nearly a straight line and I continued to the east coast of England and along that, that coast in the area the land is flat and gives way to great marshes that edge the sea. It was there that a man called Paul Gallico first told me the story of Philip, Fritha and the snow goose and I shall share it with you now. Philip had a deformed back so his head was carried low, as if he was looking on the ground for something he had lost. He was a shy man, and he hated the way that people, strangers particularly, they stared at him. But with his black bushy beard and his hunched figure, folk did stare. So he withdrew from being amongst people. He felt more comfortable alone. He loved the countryside, particularly wild birds. And so that quiet, marshy corner of our country attracted him. The marshes were rich with ducks, geese, gulls and much else besides. It was there that he found, and was able to buy, an abandoned lighthouse. He lived there alone. Years ago the sea had receded, and the marshes claimed the ground. The sea was now over a mile away. Philip was an artist and a sailor. A river channel came close to the lighthouse and there he secured his sailing boat. So he sailed his boat, he watched the birds and he painted splendid pictures of them. Each week he sailed upstream to the local village where he bought his food and provisions. Philip guarded these marshes. He seemed to know if strangers were around. Then he would quietly appear in his boat protecting his beloved birds. If any birds were sick or injured, then he took them to his home where he cared for them skillfully, tenderly and patiently. So around the lighthouse were open pens for his bird patients. I remember when I was a boy, my granny showed me how to trim the outer edges of a chicken's wing on one side only. Then if that chicken tried to fly away, it would be bound to fly in a small circle. It couldn't help it but it always landed back where it started. Well, Philip did that to his wild bird patients. But as they got better, their feathers grew again, and then they were able to happily fly away. But some, some birds, they liked the extra food and the security, so they stayed. Also, other wild birds saw them contented and would fly in to join them. Some came back year after year. One afternoon, in late autumn, Philip was in the lighthouse when there was a little timid tap on the door. He opened it and there, looking very frightened, was a girl and in her arms was a great white bird. It lay still and it had blood stains on it. I found this, mister. It's wounded. Is it still alive? she asked. Yes, yes, I, I think so. Come in, my dear. Let's have a look. His voice was quiet and gentle. He carefully took the bird, turned and placed it on the table. The girl followed him, fascinated by the room with its pictures all around the walls and cosy with its small black stove. Let's keep the room warm, suggested Philip. He spread the great white wings with their black tips. She closed the door and watched him as his sure but gentle hands inspected the bird. Where did you find it? he asked. On the bank of the river. I heard gunshots, so I went there and found this bird. What is it? It's a snow goose that has come all the way from Canada, he replied. I, I, I heard tell that you cared for sick birds, mister, so I brought it to you. Can you mend it? We can but try, he replied. Come, will you help me? She held the bird still as he fetched bandages and dressings together with scissors and a wooden splint. 
deftly he straightened the broken leg and splinted it. Then he bandaged right round the bird so it couldn't flap. As he worked, he explained. As this bird was flying south, it must have got caught in a great storm, which carried it across the seas to Britain. Then someone shot at her and damaged her leg. But now, thanks to your prompt action, she's safe. We'll call her the Lost Princess. The girl laughed with delight. Yes, yes, she will be our princess and we will take care of her and make her better again. And then suddenly she remembered where she was. She panicked, fled to the door, and was out. What is your name? called Philip. Fritha, she replied as she ran. Come tomorrow, he shouted, but she was gone. Had she hurt him, he wondered. Would she come? The snow goose mended swiftly. Fritha came each day and stayed just long enough to care for her patient, who was soon wandering around with just a bit of a limp. Then at the end of May, one morning, a group of pink feet geese, which had wintered at the lighthouse, enjoying the extra feed and security, answered the inbuilt call of their breeding grounds and took off to fly north. With them went the snow goose. Fritha was there. Look, look, the princess is going also. They, they heard her call as if saying, thank you and farewell. Then Fritha no longer came to the lighthouse. Philip missed her company. It was in September when Philip happened to be in the pens tending the birds when he heard the clear call of a snow goose. She had returned. Perhaps she'd summered in Spitsbergen up in the Arctic. We've been there just 600 miles from the North Pole. It's a beautiful place in summer, but mostly white with snow. When Philip next went to the village, he left a message for Fritha. The princess is back. A couple of days later, she came. Fritha had grown that summer, was more confident, not so shy of Philip. Now they were co-workers caring for the birds. And so it continued. In the early summer, the snow goose left and so did Fritha. Then in the autumn, the snow goose returned with the pink feet geese and Fritha resumed her visits. Sometimes she sailed with Philip and learnt the ways of the wildlife in the marshes. Their enclosure pens were extended as more birds wintered with them. Then, one year, the snow goose did not return. Philip missed her and missed Fritha also. But the next winter she returned again. Philip welcomed her back. Fritha returned. She was now a teenager and going on towards being a young woman. As usual, the snow goose took off with the pink feet in May. They stood watching them. Look, Philip, she said. Look. The snow goose had wheeled round and flew back in a low dive, passing close to them. Then again she turned and landed near them. She's not leaving, said Fritha. She's going to stay. Yes, this is her home now, said Philip. You'll not be alone now, said Fritha. Turning, she walked away. Goodbye, Fritha, Philip called after her. Bye, she waved, and then she was gone. It was 1940 and a terrible time for the whole country. Europe was at war. The Nazi forces were rampaging through country after country at great speed, smashing through each country's defences. Britain had sent an army of soldiers over the sea to assist the French, but they too were now being driven back towards the coast. Nothing could stop the enemy forces. Now it was a matter of saving our soldiers. They retreated to the beaches of Dunkirk, but the enemy were closing in all around them. Their only hope was to be rescued by ships, but they were on gently sloping beaches and ships could not get into those shallows. There went out a national appeal. Small boats are urgently needed to ferry our soldiers from the beaches to the ships. If you have a suitable boat and are in charge in reach of Dunkirk, then please go at once to this battlefield to save our men. It was about this time that Fritha returned to the lighthouse, just to see if the princess really had stayed. She found Philip 
stocking up his boat with food and water plus extra gear for a voyage. Philip, she called, are you going away? Oh, Fritha, he replied, I'm so glad you've come. I have to go. Our men must be saved. I can help. It's about a hundred miles and with a fair wind I can do that in a night and a day. I can take six men at a time from the shore to the bigger ships in the deeper water. Every trip will make a difference. I can do many trips. Fritha felt her heart go cold. Oh, Philip, must you go? You'll not come back. Why must it be you? Quietly, tenderly, Philip explained. Unless the men are rescued at once, they will all be captured and imprisoned. The army must be rescued. They may well be needed soon to defend this country from enemy invasion. Also, the terrible Nazi movement must be defeated. Our freedom forever depends on it. I must do my bit to make a difference. Besides, these men are like our lost princess. They need help. Fritha looked at him and saw not the hump-backed figure, but the brave man who had risked his life in order that people might be free to think their own thoughts and to live without fear, free to do as God planned and fulfil their potential. War must be stopped, but peace and liberty must be fought for. Shall I come with you? she asked. No, he shook his head, but thank you. Every place in the boat is needed for the rescue. Will you care for the birds, Fritha? She nodded. Then as a final goodbye. Godspeed, Philip. He sailed down the creek towards the open sea. The sun had set and it was gathering gloom. Fritha stood watching. Then she heard the flapping of wings. Those great white wings with black tips flashed past her as the snow goose went to watch over Philip. The story now gets fragmented into little co comments and snatches of conversation from those rescued soldiers. The trapped soldiers formed into lines stretching out into the sea and then the smaller boats ferried them out to the bigger boats and ships further out in the deeper waters. And there was a red sailed boat going back and forth through the enemy gunfire as enemy planes blazed along with their machine guns going. But that little boat, now with holes in its sails, kept going back and forth. He knew no fear, that humpbacked angel what saved our lives, said one soldier. Yes, yeah, said another. He was right cheery too. Six at a time and look lively now, but keep your heads down, he said. But strangest of all, said his mate, was that great white bird flying over us. It followed him everywhere. He never stopped. All day and on into the night he carried load after load. He saved a great many lives, he did. Fritha stayed alone at the lighthouse. She cared for the birds and looked through some of the wonderful, vibrant pictures that Philip had painted. She also watched out. Then one evening, the snow goose came flying back. But she did not land. She circled the lighthouse in a fond farewell and flew off to the west into the sunset. God be with you, Philip. She murmured thoughtfully. She locked the lighthouse door and she opened all the bird pens. Then she slowly walked home, wondering, would she ever see Philip again? He would always be in her heart. He would never walk alone.